you have any words about the beach scenes, which for many people are kind of a surprise in this exhibition, and they haven't seen so many of them and the variation that you bring to them over your, your career. You grew up on the beach. You see it uh, from when you're in, in uh, the, so the southern part of California. The brushwork in the beach scenes often seems quite different than the brushwork in your other paintings. Um, what can you tell us about this work that might be a surprise to many people in the audience? Well, when I do these series of paintings, I'm, I'm always, most of the series take a number of years, 12, 14 years or something. The beach pictures, the recent beach pictures are really so recent, I'm not at all convinced about them. So it's still something sort of ongoing. And mm -hmm. I suppose if I were wise, I wouldn't show them until I really looked at them a long time. But this helps. And this is, I think, important in teaching. Uh, when should a student show his work or her work? And I think the sooner the better, because the sooner you get it, away from the classroom, away from your, what you're used to seeing, and in an environment with other paintings. This helps, I think, to develop some sort of critical evaluation of your work. You see it differently. I can remember the first time I showed in that uh, environment, I had a painting I was sort of proud of, and it was taken or given to this exhibition person and then I went to see it. I was, I, I must say, I was so embarrassed I wanted to take it off the wall and take it home. It was the first time I'd really seen it, see it in a kind of objective environment. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to show your work and exhibit your work and learn to engage and practice the art of critical interrogation, because that's another, probably one of the most missing tools of help for, and how sorely we need it. You know, if you were an opera singer, you'd have people who would help you, or writers, novelists have people that look over the work and uh, tell you, you know, to do things to it. We need art doctors, just like you have. You know. <laughs> Tough and gentle. Yeah. Think of having a doctor of color to come in and straighten out your color, or make your space work properly. Maybe you know? this is an insurance plan the museum could take part in. <laughs> um, let's, let's get to a few audience questions, if that's okay with you. What new painters are you interested in? Painters? Painters. Other painters? Other painters, young painters, new painters. I could give you a list, but it would be like an art histori historian manual. It's, uh, I really uh, like them all. I, I tend to like those painters, I guess, who are and can give me insights into problems I'm facing. If you're interested in color, for instance, you go to people like Bonnard and Matisse and Indian miniature painting, uh, the Fauves, to see what, how they managed it. You'd look at Joseph Albers and see his uh, serialization of what happens to color and space. So the painters, I think, to be useful and since this is a, the wonderful thing about a, being a painter is that you're in a community of excellence. You're responsible to try to be as good as you can and to use their examples as ways to find out how to do things. So I go to museums a lot and love museums and love all painters. We need more painters all the time. Everybody should be a painter. Everybody should <laughs> learn to draw. What would the world be like if everybody learned to draw? Remember, I think it's 17 to 20 
signers of our Declaration of Independence knew how to draw. Some of them were inventors. Some were architects. Thomas Jefferson, look what he did at Monticello. I mean, it's, that's a world in which we have got to move so that everybody has more of a chance to experience the wonder of trying to reduce the three-dimensional world to a two-dimensional surface. Absolute magic and a way of knowing that nothing else can quite accomplish. Um, go on to the next question. Which painting are you most proud of? My own? Yes, your own. I, well, I would have to say I think there's a pastel of my wife. She looks like she's about 14. <laughs> she wasn't quite that young when we got married, but it's, uh, it's probably one of my favorites. What's currently in the studio? What are you currently painting? Well, the last painting is the one of the mountain. It's uh, just a big, funny mountain. And that's those are the things I'm working on at the moment. How do you determine what brush strokes you use or what style you're using in advance or as you're working on the canvas? Say again? How do you determine your brush stroke or style in advance or as you're working, as you begin to work? That's a really puzzling question. I don't know. I, I suppose I think of brushes a lot. I, you know, if you are ever with painters talking about something, they can bore the pants off of you by talking about brush strokes. <laughs> you know, quick brush strokes, dancing brush strokes, drum beat brush strokes, uh, Two hair brushes, <laughs> ten hair brushes. They asked de Kooning one time, de Kooning, what, uh, how do you go about your painting? And he held up some brushes. He said, I got a floppy brush, I got a wolf hair brush, I got a goat hair brush, I use all the brushes. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we'll go to the next question. <laughs> Which of the following would you say contributed most to your artistic success? Talent, inspiration, hard work, or mere happenstance? <laughs> there are only four choices. <laughs> so. Well, certainly good luck. And I think I work hard. Given that your work predates pop artists such as Warhol and Lichtenstein, how would you define your relationship to pop art? Well, I don't, uh, I'm not a card carrying pop artist and uh, <laughs> I don't have a lot of interest in it, except I like some of the people who are called pop artists. And others I find uh, not as interesting or as good as a lot of wonderful commercial illustrators and graphic designers. I don't think that real question has been addressed. They've, I know they've gotten deep into the philosophical ramifications of something like pop art, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's gonna really uh, formulate a proper genuine base. I think they've got to look more at commercial art and its substantive achievements vis-a-vis -vis pop art. I don't, I'm not a, big fan of all pop art at all. Um, this next question is a paragraph, so settle in. Um, <laughs> have you seen Marcel Duchamp's Etant Donné installation at the Philadelphia Museum of Art? Do you think art implies a level of skill as well as an idea? Of course, Duchamp could paint, but what do you think of people like Jeff Koons and the acceptance of conceptual art? <laughs> 